Okay, YouTube. Um, here's what we got going on. I've got this all tacked in. Let me see if I can turn this for you a little bit. The mount here. I do not have the hole cut yet. Essentially, that's all I got to do outside of finish welding. I got this all ended up getting it all nice and squared up. Um, I'm doing a test fit in here with the ram. So you can see now how that's going to work. Um, one of the things that I had told you guys about is on this end here, I needed to put a spacer so that the, the end of the ram would sit center. And I was going to go out and buy a length of, of one inch tubing. Um, I think it was 16 gauge, I forget exactly. I listed off another video, it doesn't really matter. Some tubing that this will slide through. But I got lucky. Because I only need a piece like an inch or whatever long. And here's what I got. Here's the ram or the, the bar that came with this jack. So you can loosen this and, and prime this jack up. So, and it was perfect. It was absolutely perfect for the size of bolt that I have. So here that piece is. Now what I'm going to do here is I still want to, I want to make sure before I finish welding anything off, I want to make sure that this sits absolutely where I want it to sit. And that I, I want, you know, make sure I don't have to do any, you know, grinding on this or anything because of the angle. So right now, I just hooked up my compressor to it. This compressor, I don't know if it's going to be strong enough to power this without a reserve tank, just because it needs a lot of air pressure and I end up running out of air. So I might be might still be able to use it. It's just going to be one of those things where I'm just, it's going to take a little while. So let me increase the air pressure. Actually, actually I'm going to leave the air pressure alone. And the reason being is I'm not bending any tubing right now, I just need to extend that that jet. So this is how this works. I've got just a, a temporary inline air filter on here. It's Harbor Freight brand, same with the jack. And I'm just doing that to keep moisture out of the out of the jack for now. We've got 20, 20 feet of, of hose that's on it before it. So it'll work. It's so cold in here, the air is really, the compressor is really not getting hot enough to, to develop any moisture. I'm yet to see it come out of even the drain. So, here we go. I'm going to just extend this out right now. So right now, all I'm doing is just trying to get this lined up. Okay, so now let me take the, the camera, take you guys off the tripod and show you what I got going on here. So on this end, you see here, just got the spacer right there. 
and it holds that, that jack a little bit center. There's actually going to be another washer on top of it. So that, that'll balance it out a little bit better than what it currently is. Because right now it's just, just a little bit off, off center, but not much. Maybe, maybe a sixteenth of an inch or so. There's not going to be anything on top. It doesn't need it because of the weight of this ram is pushing down. It's never going to push up. So, that's what I have there. And you see here how that sits. And then the jack is actually sitting substantially lower in that. I could have made that arm. No, I couldn't have just because of that. But it is sitting lower in that arm than, than I had hoped for. Um, let me, let me check its level in comparison to the top plate though, because that's really what matters. Okay. Top plate is just about level. The bubble is touching, is touching one of those lines. So if I put this on the jack and it's doing the same thing, we're pretty much there. And it's not. You can see it's, it's actually perfectly centered. So, if I put the washer in here, it'll center it out. Um, and, and to be honest, it's probably not that big of a deal, that difference there. So I'm not going to worry too much about it at the moment. Right now I just wanted to make sure that it fits in there. We don't have any issues as far as clearance are concerned. You know, if you look inside here, there's a ton of room down in there. No clearance issues at all. Um, now that I can see this, I know for certain that I'm going to gusset this area from here to here, but I'm just going to do a, like a crescent type gusset. So it looks clean and, and, and looks good. It's not a necessary thing. I'm just going to do it just because. And on this side, I'm not sure yet. Let me, let me fully extend this. And we'll, we'll go from there. Well, if I'm going to do this, I might as well show you guys how it works. So. Let me increase the air pressure because this is too slow. I'm at 90 PSI. This really needs... Hold on. This really needs to be up in the vicinity of about 120 for that ram. So, I'm going to increase the air pressure. I have it at 90 PSI for the plasma cutter. You're not supposed to have anything higher than 90 PSI going into that plasma cutter because it could blow some of the hoses and stuff and the seals on the inside of the plasma cutter. So, let me get this extended. If you watch here, what I'm watching on this side is that pin drop. As soon as that pin drops, this thing is... It, it, is basically at its full extension of where I plan on taking it to. It'll actually extend further, but I'm looking for clearance at that point. So, let's keep going.
just waiting for the compressor to turn off so you can hear me just fine. We're sitting right next to it, so even though it's a quiet compressor, I'm sure it's loud on the on the microphone because we're right next to it. Okay, now that that's turned off, we're about ready to drop into the into that first pinhole. And like I've said in my, my other videos, each one of these holes is a readjustment point. So I'll get it to that point, and then what you do is um, you readjust your pin right here into the next hole. You'll take this pin, collapse your ram, and drop it into this pole, this hole, and your die will sit there and stay put because this pin is holding your die in place, and then you start over again. Depending on how far you're making your bend, you know, if it's a 90 degree bend, then, then you'll go at least to this next hole here in the ram. You might actually go a little bit further. Um, so right now I'm just going to get it to that point because even though this will, even though this ram will extend a little bit further, there's no point in it because it's not going to ever make it to this other pinhole. So I'm going to always stop unless it, unless it's a bend that I know that I'm, you know, I just need it to be a 45, and then I'm going to bend it a little bit further to the 45 degree line. Um, but anything beyond a 45, I'm going to repin it and I'm going to start again because I don't want to be in the middle of a bend and not be able to readjust the ram if, if, if it's not going to go far enough. So I'm going to take this a little further just so it drops down and then we're going to look at our clearances again. I'm going to make some marks on this arm so that I know where I can guess it and where I can't. Um, and, and then we're pretty much done. Um, I got to mark the holes for the, the base and and punch out those holes and put its you know put its pin which is another one of those um, 5 8 bolts in here and if you look here it is it is touching that edge so I might take the grinder to that edge a little bit I'm not sure I don't think it's that crucial because if I take this to the point a full extension it's going to be leaning as much as it's ever going to lean this direction you see what I'm saying so if I take that and use that as my marking point I should never have a problem but I'll probably even after I cut this hole out and put the pin in I'm probably just for clearance issues I'll take my grinder and, and grind off some of that try to round out this corner or something just for just for peace of mind but as soon as I do that you know, then I'm just going to finish weld everything. <clears throat> as far as this gusset is concerned and this gusset is concerned, I'm not going to do that right now. <clears throat> I'm not even sure I'm going to do it at all. Because it's just, it might just be a waste of metal for me. Um, I'm, I don't want to waste metal. I have to, I have to be smart about what I'm doing. And plus it's, a weight issue too so I'm probably not going to I'm not definitely not going to until I put a piece of tubing in there and actually bend it which is going to be pretty soon here um, I've got this other project that I'm going to be trying to wrap up this week and as soon as I'm done with that I'm going to and, and collect my, my profit from it I'm going to order some more metal and the tubing that I'm going to need to start my roll cage on my truck and that's when I'm going to start doing my first bends with this and we'll see how it goes if it's strong enough the way it stands, I'm not going to do anything to it. If it's not strong enough and I see some flexing going on here in the, in the front section, then I'll guess at it. Um, but outside of that, I, I really don't see that it's going to do that. It's got these, these bolts here with the tubing that are supporting that vertically. So I, I think we're good. If you don't agree with me, let me know in the comment section. But, but I think it'll be okay. So let, let's drop this down so that you can see that pin actually fall. So there you go. When that pin falls, <clears throat> what you're going to do is you're going to take this and you're going to loosen this. Okay, that's just your release. What I'm probably going to do is I'm probably going to make a mount right here for some garage door springs, top and bottom, and run some garage door springs to this. 
so that it will collapse it by itself. Because right now, my only means of collapsing is to release that and then collapse it manually. Okay, but first what I got to do is I got to pull this pin. Okay, and for now I'm just going to set this pin right here. So and then I'm going to start collapsing this. And it's just a matter of me pushing it. If this was bolted to the floor, it would be a lot easier. Then I've got it collapsed just a little bit. And you can see this die is not moving back. So I'm going to put this pin back in that hole. But because there's no hole in the die set directly underneath, it won't fall down. So as I'm collapsing this, I need to move this die up because it's in the way. As I'm collapsing this down and it gets to that hole, it's going to drop. There it goes. Um, there. <clears throat> I had to wiggle it a little bit because this mount over here is moving. So, and plus I'm using one hand. So now, Theoretically, this is close to a 45 degree bend on the tubing. It's actually a little bit less, but it's close um, if there was a piece of tubing in there. So then what I would do is I would tighten this back up. And then start bending again. You see what I'm saying? And then it's, it's you're basically just starting all over. Let me let that catch up so it'll shut up. Okay. <clears throat> now that that's off. So basically, I'm just going to stop right here, and, and that just that process repeats at least two other times depending on, on the length of your, your bend. If you're trying to do a 180 degree bend, you're going to have to do that at least two more times. Um, so this seems to be actually working out great. Like I said, my plan is to eventually put some garage springs on here, from here to, to here, so that when it comes time to compress it, I don't have to, I don't have to manually do it. It'll do it by itself. That's always been the plan. Um, I just don't have the springs and, and I don't really necessarily need them at the moment. So when I get around to it, I'll do it and, and, and until then it's just going to stay the way it is. Um, so one more video after this and it's just going to be me doing a, a follow up of the pin being in here and everything finished welded off. Again, I'm not going to do that gusset here and I'm not going to do this, this gusset on this side. I'm just going to finish weld all this off and, and get that pin in there and, and call it done. Um, I'm probably also going to mount it to the floor over here so that you just see it complete and ready to go. All right, um, link to my Facebook page down in the, in the description box and link to JD Squared Model 32 Bender in the description box. There's also a link to the, the Harbor Freight 8 ton ram, air over hydraulic ram. You can see it right there in the description box. And if you have any questions, see anything in my shop that you have questions about, feel free to ask, message me, subscribe, comment, like, the whole works. Talk to you guys later.